Hello and welcome to the Pick 6 Podcast. Sam McEwen along with Tom Chattel uh, for this week's podcast. Evan Bland is out on vacation. I am back. It is the end of February. We are going into March. And we got, we got like basketball to talk about in March. Not just whether a coach will keep his job, but whether Nebraska basketball is going to go to the NCAA tournament. Tom, this is exciting. Like this is, this feels like the best March in some time for Husker hoops and just hoops in the state, in the state in general. It's very exciting, Sam. It's, um, this is what you want as a college basketball fan. Uh, you know, your team is either on the bubble and you got things to, you know, you're every day you, you're looking at the bracketology, um, sites and you're you know you're looking at the net rating and you're you're you know you're you're just obsessing over it. That's the best part about being a college basketball fan this time of year. Especially if if you think your team is in and you're just worried about seed and matchups and um I don't know that this season uh snuck up on us, but it certainly I thought I thought this team had, was good enough to do this, but wow, here we are. And um uh, they are doing it, and um, you know Wisconsin keeps losing. They, you know, Nebraska's in shape to do a, a top four finish, um, which would mean the the the, the double buy, um, which means you you go to Minneapolis and you don't cover a game for a while. I guess I don't know. You don't play a game for a while, so um, yeah, it's 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 it's, it's incredible, and. Um, I, I, I was trying to figure out, you know, they're at 20 wins now. They could, could conceivably get to 23 or four um, pretty easily. Um, that would be the best record. That would be the second best record of all time in Nebraska. The 90, 91, Tony Farmer, Rich King team won 26. Wow, right in the big eight, yeah. 26. Um, but 24. I mean, and, and is this the is this the second best team ever in Nebraska? Is this uh, let is me this, pose that this, question to you? If they you, win a game in the them. tournament, they might be the best team. They might go down as the best team if they can win a game in the tournament because Ooh. of the number of wins and the, 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 the accomplishment. I know I'm getting way ahead of myself. That's what we do. That's good. But that's, um, I mean, this is what we're watching right now. So you've been around the orbit of Big Eight basketball probably your whole life, and so you're you've been familiar with maybe the last Joe Cipriano teams, the one Andre Smith was a part of in '80, the slow mo Iba teams, then Danny Knee. So you tell me, like you you have the institutional knowledge here when you think about all of the teams that you've seen in Nebraska basketball history, or at least the last, you know, 45, 50 years, we're not going to go all the way back to bus Whitehead and we'll mm-hmm. just leave that in the past. Um, but, you know, where does this team rank right now in this moment? Well, it, it's, you're right. It's, it's in progress, but I think that 96 team was probably the most talented team. I didn't, I didn't get to watch the 91 team that much. I think people still all think 91 is at the very top. Um, but 96 had uh, everybody, uh, Eric Strickland and uh, Teron Lou were on that team together. Um, now they won the NIT, um, but, I, you know, this this team I don't think is, is the pure talent that that team did. I'm not sure how many NBA guys will be in on this team, but um, – it's a hell of a team. It's um, it's got so many different answers. It's got a, it's got a superstar that teams have, teams have to kind of game plan around. Um, it's got a lot of really good college basketball players um, who are playing really well right now together, and they are they're playing good offense. The, you know, the the the, the, the defense has been exceptional at times. Um, when the defense and rebounding are there, they're hard to beat. Because they have this offense, they don't necessarily have a lot of great offensive skill guys, but but they're good enough, and they've got a coach who puts them in, in the right places. I mean, he can out coach people in that offense. Um, it's it's fun to watch, um, and just it's it's got a team with 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 a lot of chemistry 
and and right now it's uh, a lot of belief. Um, you know, I don't know what where they'll get seated or whether where they'll get sent or who they'll play against, but um, they'll they'll be a handful. But they, you know, they have one game on the road uh, that they won last week, uh, and Indiana looked terrible. Um, then Indiana comes back and beats Wisconsin last night at home. Right. So, um. I, you know, we'll, we'll see you again tomorrow night at Ohio State. Ohio State's playing well. Um, but I, I I like this team a lot, and, and the fans love this team. And everything's sold out right now. It's um, it's a great story. You know, this, you know, Nebraska basketball, we, we've all said it. They ever won it on a consistent basis. They ever did this all the time. It would be a huge, huge sport in this state. And that's what you have to do to get to grow basketball. It's you've got to do this. You've got to win at the right time. You've got to go to the tournament. You've got to give people a taste and it'll explode. And uh, this is just one year, but this is, this is what it's all about. Let's go over the Wilson Moore and John Walker have their half court press podcast. And I want people to listen to that. So I hope, I hope they do. And, They'll they'll talk they'll talk more about everything that's maybe going on with with the team, but uh, more specifically. But here are the bracket projections as we talk right now. Wilson put this out this morning. In ESPN, they're a number nine seed in the South region, uh, according to CBS Sports. They're a number ten, uh, playing BYU in Salt Lake City. College Sports Madness, number nine, playing Oklahoma. Uh, NCAA.com, number nine, playing Oklahoma. That would be kind of fun if if they were to do that number 10 seed. So it's somewhere in that 8, 9, 10 range. Uh, the general school of thought is that if Nebraska falls out of that 10, they got to play all the way up to a 7 to then go to Omaha because it seems pretty clear right now that Kansas and Iowa State, both very close, are going to have uh, a successful enough seasons to be sort of your anchor uh, teams in Omaha. So we're going to get the – we're going to get Hilton. It's going to be Lawrence North – and Hilton West, and uh, but but Nebraska in theory could fit into that seven or six line if they can play and win a bunch of games, and then they would be in Omaha, and then it would be Lincoln East, you know, and it would just be this yeah. collision of three teams and all of their fans. Yeah. And and Iowa State and Kansas fans will spend money to go to that arena, so it would be kind of fun to see, you know, how many get people get in. But uh, but if Nebraska is kind of in that eight nine line, they're probably not going to Omaha because because the number one seeds appear to be going other places. Memphis, yeah. it's Houston, Salt Lake City would be where Arizona goes if, if that's where Arizona ends up. And so it'll be it'll be interesting uh, to watch. But but to, you know, you made the point about the way they play and the fact that they're they're selling the house out. I was there on Sunday. Uh, I got tickets from a friend. Uh, we, we were in the 300 section high up uh, and uh, half court, but high up. And I'll tell you what, every single seat was taken. And that's rare. Like, I've kind of sat up in the 300s before. Um, I was there with my son. But every single seat on our section was taken up. And it was uh, it was pretty, it was a pretty festive crowd. Like, yeah. the anger was up and the excitement was <laughs> up. And it's just cool to experience that, uh, you know, as a spectator instead of with the media in that moment. Right. Yeah. I, um, you know... Keeping an eye on on the on on these potential seeds is is really tough. Um, I mean, last night Candace lost at home to BYU, and that's um, they could be trending. You know, they got to go to Houston still. <laughs> they mm -hmm. could be trending to a three. Um, but Iowa State, I, I think Iowa State's going to win the uh, the Big Twelve tournament, and um, they could be moving up to a two. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know what we'll get here or how that'll work, but if um, if we get Nebraska, Iowa State here, that's Hoiberg, Iowa State. Can you imagine that um, atmosphere? Uh, crazy. Um, and um, so we'll see where they end up. But, uh, yeah, I, I, that's, that's a great way to look at that is, you know, if you think they're a seven or ten, they'll be with a two. Or if they're, you know – uh, eight or nine will be with a one. Um, 
they probably won't get to a six. I don't know if they either they there. I don't think there's any way they'll get that high, but um, but I mean, we'll just <laughs> it's gonna be fun to see. Um, they, they in theory could you know the only way they play them their way into a six is if they win out yeah. and then they go and they win the Big Ten tournament. Well, and right, right. They did this right. once before. I mean, in '94 they played to a six. Now. Those yeah. were bad memories for people because they played with six and then they drew <laughs> an 11 seed that had two NBA guards and they lost <laughs> to Pennsylvania. But, um, you know, I, I, I think they could in theory play to it if they, if they can go 23 and eight, yeah. uh, because that's what they'd be. Right. And then they'd win the big 10 tournament. If they did that, they're 26 and eight. That's probably a six. You know, looking back at that, at that time, uh, Sam, um, I think there would be more urgency uh, if they make the tournament to win that game now, and maybe a lot more pressure too. Yeah, but you know, back in the nineties, uh, everything was still fresh. Um, they hadn't made that many tournaments, so and, and frankly, in ninety three, ninety four, when they're losing these games, you thought, well, they're going to keep going to tournaments. That's not they'll win one of these eventually. This isn't that big a deal. Yeah, it's it hurt to lose the pin, um, in in ninety four, but it's not like you felt like, you know, the, the whole nation was watching and you know laughing at Nebraska for being the only school that ever won a game. That wasn't right. the case then, um, so it, it wasn't that wasn't really a factor back in the early nineties that you were, you know, oh they, they, they this was the program that can't win a game. No, it was a program that was going every year, and you figured it was going to happen eventually. So. Um, but now I think that's that's a greater emphasis on this. I think it'll, you know, maybe that focus is is what you need. Again, it's pressure too, but I think it it's um, it's a good focus. It's a, it's a, a good pressure to have, um, and it, it means you don't come out of the gate sleepwalking. You know, you, you should be ready to go. So, um, so anyway, yeah, we'll. But I think this team is. Um, it's well equipped to win the tournament, but you got to make shots. It's a shot making tournament, man. It's a, it you got to make shots. And if they don't make shots, they get one of those deals where nobody can hit. Um, but they, you got, they have a way to make shots, to get good shots inside. And that, that if you're, if all you are is behind the three point line, it's, you know, the, the NCAA tournament's a gamble, it's a toss up. If you can go in there and get fouls and get good guys inside, um, you know, with the right matchup, uh, I think you're in a, a lot better shape. Nebraska has five or six guys that can make shots too. They don't all make them on the same night, right? Um, unless they're playing Purdue, but but they have five or six guys who can who can make them. And on Sunday, kind of out of nowhere, it's Jawan Gary. You know, he's not much of a three point shooter, but he made a bunch of them. Casey didn't have a great game. C.J. Wilcher maybe had his worst game of Big Ten play, but but there's Juwan Gary, um, you know, and and as I think about the guys that are the heart and soul of this team, it's hard for me to ever pivot away from him and Josiah Alec. Alec, obviously not an offensive gem, but man, those two guys play harder than everybody else on the floor. Yeah, I I agree, and um, you know the K-State factor is is interesting to me because he, you know. He's had a hard hard time getting the ball at times. They they really all, you know, Minnesota's uh, losing by double digits, and they're still sending two guys after him. Yeah, um, you know that means other guys are open, obviously. But um, now you get this Jamarcus Lawrence factor off the bench. I mean, there's a lot of things going on here that I think are going to serve them well. Yeah, Casey sometimes gets the Caitlin Clark treatment. It's pretty interesting. So I went back and looked at the box score that that. Uh... Lost to Penn. Penn hit 11 of 27 threes, 11 of 27. Nebraska hit 320. There's the game. Were you at that um, game? I, I don't even Where was oh, that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, um, that was, it was a Long Island. Um, yeah. I think we, uh, I can't remember if that was one of those, one of those years Lee and I, uh, bought tickets on the team plane. Oh, there was like a, a charter. And then they had a few seats open, so they, they they sold us seats. I don't think it was – it might have been Syracuse. It might have, I think it was Long Island, but, yeah. Um, 
they celebrated that week. They were, you know, they after winning the Big Eight uh, tournament. They, um, those oh, players, <laughs> the, the, the players would all admit that that they celebrated all week and their legs were kind of shot. That's the problem with those conference turn title games, is you know you can <laughs> your legs just go out after you play every day and and that time of year and and then and they didn't stay off their feet all week. They were having fun and. Um, and they, you know, after winning that big eight thing, that was a big deal beating Norm Stewart in Kansas City, Eddie Sutton. And um, that was a big deal. And so, you know, okay, you know, now we're playing Penn and way out in the middle of, you know, Long Island. Okay. <laughs> and again, you know, winning the tournament back then, it, it, you wanted to do it, but, but yeah, you felt like there would be another chance. You, you didn't feel like, it feels like they had Nebraska. Oh, you know, they never make the tournament. Every time they get a chance, you better win. You know, right. it, wasn't like, it wasn't like that back then. So I don't think the urgency was there for that. Um, I, I, I think there'll be urgency uh, this time around. Yeah. Nassau Coliseum is still standing, by the way. It is still. It is. Still well, still. I mean, seven years later, I saw Creighton there uh, against Iowa in the same building. Mm-hmm. So uh, Rich Kypist and I did that uh, duty. They lost to Steve Alford's Iowa. Um, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the Iowa boys, Ryan Sears and uh, Corver, um, they play well. I remember, I remember Corver missed a, a million three pointers. Yeah, uh, he's in the locker room crying into a towel, and you know Sears is trying to console him. You know Sears was on his way out. Corver was on his way up, and he said there'll be other chances. You, you know all this stuff, but yeah. Um, yeah, and the old Nassau, not not, not too good to Nebraska uh, uh, teams, I guess. <clears throat> Let's talk about the college football playoff a little bit. Uh, so there's a there's a bunch of things to, uh, bouncing around about the contract. So first of all, they're you know they've got two more years on the current contract. They're going to expand it to twelve, mm-hmm. and they're they're thinking about a TV deal that goes beyond that. But for now, ESPN controls the whole thing. So they're talking about first they're going to expand it to 12 and it's going to be five conference champions and seven, you know, uh, what do you call it? At large bids. Yeah. But about two weeks ago, and even having kind of touched on it, but I wanted to kind of come back to it now that I'm back. It looks like they want to try to expand it to 14 and expanding it to 14. You'd start that with the new TV contract. And if they expanded it to 14 teams, the big 10, and the SEC basically would get four bids. That was kind of the conversation that was being had. Both of these leagues now have 18 teams, so 36 teams are in those leagues, and they would take up eight of the 36 bids, um, or I'm sorry, eight of the 14 bids, so eight of the 36 teams would make the playoff. That's just under 25%. I'm curious what you think of of that particular setup, a 14-team setup, with eight teams from the Big Ten and the SEC total four from each league, you like that idea? Well, I, I want to see twelve first. I mean, I, I don't understand why we can't have twelve first. Is it because we will the, have 12, the TV yeah. money yeah. is isn't is, is, didn't come back like they thought? Oh, when we add two more teams, we'll get more TV money in the first rounds. And sometimes I feel like college football is such a TV show that the commissioner. College football should be like a TV guy. Um, and I, I'd love to know what uh, 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 the Big Ten, um, the Big Ten Commission, Tony Petiti, who is a TV guy, former TV guy, what he thinks about all this because yeah. it, just, it just seems like so, such a reaction to uh, TV money where everybody who's been telling them for years, you know, the, the playoff is going to bring unbelievable, untold millions, untold wealth. Um, well, maybe it didn't the first time back. Um, so, and this is obviously going to be about greed and not only money, but, uh, you know, Big Ten and SEC greed. We want more. Right. So to get more, they have to add teams. I mean, I like to see 12 first and just see what happens um, and just see if, if, if it's necessary. I mean, I think. You know, if you want to go to 16, okay. I, then I, you, I've obviously absolutely shut it off after 16. But because you're going to start inviting teams that really don't belong in the national title picture. When you're 14, 15, 16, 
Yeah, you see, you see that about college basketball too. And college basketball has been great, but it's a different animal. Um, Very different, yeah, for sure. But but sixteen, it's funny. Nobody worries about how many games they're playing. Or you remember? I remember when, when presidents used to be worried about the academics. Oh, you're going to miss all these classes. Uh, eh, you know. So at, at least they're at least at least nobody's making that up anymore. It, it's. Uh, <laughs> It's what a, a bunch of crap. But uh, anyway, I'd like to see 12. I think 12 is a good number. I just think there's probably no more than, than 12 teams who should win the national title. And there probably aren't that many. But the problem you're going to get into is how many from each conference. Right. You see, I, I don't think the big 12 or ACC are going to – I think they're going to get one. I think they're going to get one in there. Um because the, the the I mean look at the we'll, we'll get the rankings this year the brand names including the Pac-12 who are now in the Big Ten and Oklahoma and Texas who are now in the SEC we're all over the the top top ten of the rankings so that's who's going to be in the top ten next year same teams except they're going to all be going to be the Washington and Oregon going to be Big Ten. So the Big 12 is just going to get – they're the champion probably in. And and the ACC, after they lose Florida State and whoever else they lose, are just they're just going to get one. So, I mean, it's – so maybe that maybe these other commissioners are trying to push expansion to get more of their teams in. But um, I don't know. It's um, – <laughs> it's very interesting because Alabama now is a new coach and – I feel like the tide is going to turn there a little bit for college football, a new era where uh, you're going to have more teams. For a while, we were we were stuck on Alabama Clemson every freaking year. And so I feel like we're going to have a wide open uh, tournament in a lot of ways. Um, I think Texas is going to hold their own in the SEC. I think the, the, the Big Ten is going to change a little bit. It won't be – just Ohio State and Michigan. Um, there, there's going to be four teams, I, I think minimum from each Big Ten and SEC. There might be five. Um, so, so be it. I'm all for it. Um, I just think uh, it's a little, well, it's very predictable that they've been talking about fourteen if they haven't even haven't even had twelve yet, but. <laughs> I think this will be 16 eventually, and uh, at some point TV will say, eh, expansion is not worth it anymore. Let's, let's hold off. Um, let's stay here. But, um, you know, the, the TV numbers will tell everybody where, where it's going and I guess how fast. I think we'll get 12 and 24 and 25. It is interesting, though, that – I do think it's worth watching how many bids the Big Ten and the SEC get in the next two years. Yeah. Because what if they get four and four in the next two years, and which is possible, in my opinion. And if that happens, I think the two leagues would be satisfied with that response. They would look around and go, yeah, that works for us. <laughs> I don't know if it'll work for, for the Big 12 and – the ACC, I know you probably saw this news of Lance Leopold's getting a new contract and Kansas football is putting $450 million. Not a lot of that stadium money into its into its program. So Kansas football intends to make a playoff or two. You don't invest that kind of money unless you're willing to do that. And Nebraska's investing a lot of money. So uh, obviously there's a lot of there's going to be a lot of competition for those bids. I saw something on Twitter that was really interesting. And I retweeted it a couple of days ago. Somebody had gone back and looked at the previous rankings and tried to determine how many times a team would make the playoff. And two things jumped out at me. The first thing that jumped out at me is that Penn State would have made four. And that would, I think, change our opinion of James Franklin. Sure. That, was, that was one. The second one, though, is that I believe it indicated that two Temple teams would have made the playoff. I'm not sure I agreed with that math, but that's what it said. And one of the Baylor teams would have made it. So hmm. 
several of Matt Rule's teams would have already made it if, if we had a 12-team system back then. And here's my question. Do you think that people understand fully even what Matt Rule did at Temple and Baylor? And like if there had been a playoff berth attached to it, do you think people would better understand the kind of coach that Nebraska has right now? Well, I, I don't understand Temple. I didn't really follow it. But I know I, I certainly he did a great, great job there. I mean, he won how many he won uh 10 games in Temple, right? 10 games twice. Yeah, so I mean that okay, we don't need to know too much about the owls to know that that's pretty damn good. Um yeah. but I know Baylor in the Big 12, I know what he did there as I know I've got context. I know with the other teams, I know who who he's going against and um the the Texas and OU machines um you know um you know everybody else is really good. Um yeah, I, I know I know what I know I know what he's all about. Um that's why I'm you know, I I'm I'm excited to, to see a guy surrounded by all the toys in Nebraska, all the access to players, um the riches, the the facilities, the uh the passion, the fans, you know, things you don't have at Baylor, things you don't have at Temple. So um you know, so yeah, I I I I think it's um it's great. And you know, and another thing about these guys um in the Big Twelve and ACC, Sam, is um so you know, speaking of rule, something he told me a couple weeks ago about scheduling, where and I, I don't necessarily know that it'll be up to him. Uh, there's financial concerns in Lincoln and home games to be had and and contracts to be uh done and you know, the contracts that they have currently with Tennessee and Oklahoma down the road, but uh, I've got a feeling he'll have, if he's here that long, he'll have a lot to say about it, but they don't want to play. The Big Ten and SEC schools are not going to want to play a lot of tough non-conference games. They're probably not right. going to want, want to play any of them. They're got enough on their plate without having to, you know, okay, Nebraska's going to play Tennessee. Now, maybe if there's a Big Ten SEC challenge, that Fox or ESPN wants to put together and throw extra millions of people. Okay. Maybe they'll do it. But uh, when you've got the schedule lined up that they're going to have in, in 26, you, you, you don't need to see Josh Heupel and, 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 huh. and his flying circus, you, you know, he might be a top five team by then. Uh, very, they're, they're trending up that way right now. Um, I mean, they're going to be, they're going to be great. You, you don't need that. So what I'm saying is uh, um, if you're not going to play, you know, and, 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 and again, rule said, I want to play uh, local teams. And he ain't talking about K-State or Kansas. He's talking about Northern Iowa. He's talking about South Dakota. He's talking about those kind of local teams. Um, people are going to downsize their schedules. They just are because of the, 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 they're going to find out what it takes to get in the playoff. And then they're going to find out here's what I need. Here's the record I need. Here's the the, the strict of schedule is all set up in, in your league already. It's like basketball, you know. Look at Nebraska basketball this year. The the strict of schedule is already in the Big Ten. You don't need to play anybody in the non conference. Um, they, they they downsized it, and now here they are. Um, that's going to happen in football, and that's going to affect the Big Twelve and ACC because nobody's going to play their teams. The Big Ten SEC aren't going to play them, and um, you know. We'd much love to see Nebraska KU um, or some one of those old Big Eight games. That that, that would be crazy um, because KU can they can beat your ass, and then you you're stuck with before you go in to play Oregon and Washington and Ohio State, you want to go to loss. So how's that going to work out for you in the playoff? It it, it probably not going to work out. So I think these things are going to impact. We're talking about. Big 12 and, and ACC teams being in the, the, the top 12 poll, they're not going to have any good wins. They're not going to play anybody. Nobody's going to play them. They're going to play each other. It's just going to it's gonna uh, emphasize the Big 10 and SEC that much more to where we might as well just have a Big 10 SEC playoff. Now, how that would work, I don't know. Is that where we're going? I don't know. Um, a lot of sports writers sit around 
and and, and speculate on stuff. And, and that, that's where we have this world of two conferences ruling the world. Um, it will, will it happen? I don't know. But I'm just uh, to add on to your point, the Big 12 and ACC and any anybody else is going to get a, you know, the, the, the group of five Mountain West temples out there who want to be in the playoff are going to have to win their conference championship because I don't think there's going to be a whole lot of at-larges uh, because nobody's going to play them. Right. That's a good point that there's going to be, I think, a, an exodus out of some of these, you know, uh, home and home games and a move toward some of the FCS opponents at this point, the Missouri Valley, which is South Dakota State, North Dakota State. I, I, honestly, I think it's about as equal to the MAC. The MAC, the MAC is is way down, and so the you know the Missouri Valley is roughly the same. I, I I'm not opposed to an Akron over a South Dakota State. I think South yeah. Dakota State would beat Akron by a couple of t- touchdowns. So, yeah, I think I think that's probably the direction it's moving in. The 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 thing that I took from your conversation with Rule on that was I think he would be open to something if he knew that everybody else, including the Michigan Wolverines, yeah. or including everybody, was willing to play one. And Michigan, although they're going to play Texas this year, which is tough, the previous two years was able to get to the playoff, and they played teams that were nowhere near their strength, and they played them all at home, and they weren't digged for it. Well, so. They- you know, they, why do they work the system perfectly? Yeah, I mean that, that that's sort of a preview of what I think we're going to see. You're absolutely right about rule. He said, "Hey, if everybody's doing it, okay, I'll do it." But he he didn't want to do it. Um, right. He's not afraid of playing games. I mean, I had these you know uh, readers uh, weigh in. Oh, Nebraska needs to play Tennessee. We we need these games. People still like those non conference, a big non conference game. It's part of their, uh, you know, call it. It's part of their deal with the college football fan that they have that big game early. Um, well, you could have a big conference game early if if you really if you really need to come out of the gate in September with something big. There's plenty of games to go around in the Big Ten where you can, you know, so you send Nebraska up to Washington in September, and, and then there's your big game. But, right. um, I yeah, I, I understand what Matt was saying. If everybody's doing it, I'll do it. But everybody's not going to be doing it. The Big Ten is not going to agree as a league to play one, you know, uh, good non-conference, whatever you want to call it, you know, a, a big go go crossover and go play Alabama or Florida or, you know, Texas A&M. They're not going to agree to that. I don't I believe. I don't believe. I get it. AD, ADs and coaches will say, most of the coaches will say, Hey, if I don't make the playoff, I'm going to get fired. <laughs> uh, so if I play this game against Alabama in September, you know I'm not going to make the playoff, and I'm going to get fired. So I I, I don't think that's a very good idea. Sorry. Um, yeah, I think. And the other thing too is like the out of conference rivalry games; they just don't mean as much as they used to. Uh, you know, Florida, Florida State is just a game now. Like right. it's not what it was 25 years ago. And yeah, uh, South it, Carolina, Clemson never was anything. Georgia, Georgia Tech isn't what it used to be. So like. When you think about well, what will Iowa and Iowa State do, I don't think Iowa would hesitate one second to get out of that series. For, for I, one, that's a great point. The series. <laughs> like, I agree. I totally agree with that. And the, 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 they've got a new AD. Um, you know, we'll see how that goes. Um, but you're right. If, if Iowa starts going after it at the playoff and they start like everybody else in the Big Ten and they see nobody else is doing that, and I, Iowa State continues to be good. Yeah, um, you know what? We'll uh, we, we love the state of Iowa. We, we love our tradition, but sorry, right? <laughs> yeah. We'll see in the playoff if if, if 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 we both get there. You know, we're right. not going to do it. So I could definitely see that. And maybe I, I maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong on that, but no, I think you're um, completely right. So so many think times Iowa's in my life. Gonna, yeah. Rivalries in my childhood that were considered like sacred, yeah, were gone. Like you know, I remember big games between certain teams, and you know, the only one that you would say that about now is Army Navy. 
and they're not in the same conference. And I don't think they are. I mean, they are now. Yep. There's been so much uh, realignment, but you know, Army Navy is that one game where you're like, you can't change that. But like every other game that you would imagine, yeah. I know Oregon and Oregon State are going to play each other, and maybe they're going to do that for a few years because you know that they have that. But I don't think it'll last. It's, it's a nice way to ease out of the out of the out yeah. of the you know, we'll, we'll, you know. Um, but no, I I the only way that w- won't happen, Sam, is if if the big you know the the playoff committee decides to reward you for really tough schedules and ran non playing going out of your way in non-conference. Um, I don't think that'll happen. No. I think the way the playoff has been since it, it started, uh, 2014, whatever it was, um, they have rewarded wins and not necessarily strength. Right. You know what I mean? They yeah. rewarded wins. So, um, you know, we'll see. That's absolutely right. I agree. I think that's exactly what they've done. And maybe we'll, maybe this year there'll be a battle at that number 11 team where yeah. people will be like, well, you know, the number 11 here and the number um, we'll, we'll see. I think it's going to be a mess because, you know, from, I think it's, we can get in this no time. I think it's going to be messy. People think it's going to be easier when it's the number 11 team than it was when it was four versus five. Cause again, the number 12 seed is always going to be the, you know, Boise state or whomever you know, Tulane. So your number 11 team is the last team that's going to be in as an at-large bid. And people think it'll be easier and it won't be, it'll be harder. And here's why, because you're going to run into a situation where in the last week, like the last two weeks of the year, the number 11 seed isn't going to be going to the conference title game. And they're going to be playing two weak teams to end the season and they're going to win them. And they're going to look around and go, we're in the playoff, right? We're in the playoff, right? And there's going to be some sort of <laughs> something's going to happen where it's going to be the 13 teams going to come up to 11. It's like it. Well, somebody's going to messy. I agree. Somebody is going to get left out no matter how many teams you have, but it won't be of the level of like Florida state this year. It right. won't be when you have, when you're talking about top five or six, it's different than who's 11 to 12. Right. Usually 11 to 12 are just happy to be there. And if you, if you get, you get screwed out of that. Okay, you're mad, but the, the world moves on. They don't care. Um, just as I don't believe, you know, people are going to care. There won't be a controversy if you don't get a second Big Twelve team in or a second A. If if um, you know KU gets left out or uh, North Carolina gets left out, nobody's gonna. They're not going to change the playoff over that. Um, so. Um, the we'll FC Florida yeah. State snub was a big deal. That's probably the biggest one of all, and it, it, it basically prompted calls for Florida State to leave the league. So it, it that is one hundred percent true. They were already on the way out. Oh, that just that just sealed it. That was like, um, okay, I'm thinking about getting a divorce now. I'm definitely getting a divorce. Um, I mean, they're they're out of there. It's, they're they're done. But that thing is over with. It's just a question now of when and how much. Yeah. Okay. That is are our, they going to the Big Ten or are they going to the SEC? Yeah. That, that's our Pick 6 podcast for this week. Hey, lots of stuff going on with Nebraska athletics uh, that isn't the things that we just talked about. The baseball team's going to college in Charleston. The softball team has its home weekend openers. Uh, it's hard, by the way. Missouri and Wichita State are both better teams than Nebraska, so Nebraska will be fortunate to go 2-2. Two and two. In those, and of course, the Nebraska women's basketball team ends its regular season on Sunday at Illinois. I think Nebraska's women's team is already in the NCAA tournament. I think Nebraska probably needs to win one more uh, to feel really, really good about that, and preferably that would be at Ohio State uh, tomorrow night. For Tom, I'm Sam. Thanks for listening to the Pick Six podcast. Be sure to listen to the Half Court Press with Wilson Moore and John Walker. They're talking about two NCAA tournament teams. Thanks, Hustler.